Well, ladies and gentlemen, today's episode, and the one coming up next, mind you, is a bit peculiar. On one hand, I'm venturing into a locale that doesn't shout tourist hotspot at first glance. On the other hand, as per usual, I'm not there for a jolly holiday anyway. These jaunts are so exciting because there's a chance to stumble upon places I'd never think of visiting solo. And quite often, it turns out I'd have missed a bundle if not for these quirky trips. So buckle up, my dear viewers, as this time I'm extending an invitation to Romania. Now, when people saunter around here, they typically fixate on the natural wonders. And let me tell you, they're worth the gander. However, I didn't have the time for that. So I'll just showcase a couple of cities. First up on the itinerary, Timisoara. Timisoara itself doesn't have an overly thrilling backstory. In the 13th century, it got burned to ashes by the Mongols. Then it spent a fair bit of time being Hungarian and was the first in Hungary to have its own coat of arms. After a Turkish stint in the 16th to 18th century, Eugen of Savoy captured it in 1716, later giving the place a makeover in Baroque style. In the 19th century, Timisoara was a local Jewish center and in 1981 played an important part in the revolution against Ceausescu, having started the uprising after an incident with a local pastor Laszlo Turkish. But more on that later. For now, check out the largest Orthodox church in Romania. Looks a bit like a fancy manor, doesn't it? Contrary to popular belief, Romania isn't just a land of gypsies. Did you know there are only half a million of them? making up a mere 2.5% of the population. More Hungarians than that, about 6.5% and a whopping 90% of the lot are Romanians. That's more than white Brits in the UK or Czechs in the Czech Republic. And nearly 87% of Romanians are Orthodox. Beside the cathedral, there's a copy of the Capitolian wool statue a gift from Rome, flaunting the Latin roots of the Romanians. Next to it, a fountain, dubbed fish, because it spouts water from four fish totally unknown to ichthyology. And will you believe it? There's a street piano where forks actually tinkle the ivories. Further down, there's a somewhat square and awkward-looking building. Don't let its appearance fool you. That's the National Theatre and Opera. After a couple of fires, it got a major facelift. But just look how dashing it used to be. Now, I won't fib. Timisoara's center isn't exactly a lush green haven. That's probably why, just a tad further from the theatre and opera, they've plonked down, or rather up, a vertical green garden. You can even climb up for a low-flying bird's-eye view of the city. On one side, the boulevard leads to the Cathedral of the Three Saints, past the She-Wolf. On the flip side, you've got restored but not very captivating hotels and the Polytechnic University. Romania in general, and Timisoara in particular, seem to be undergoing a fair bit of sprucing up. You'll notice that again and again, but hey, the devil's in the details, which are usually visible. Wander down one of Timisoara's most renowned streets, the one with the umbrellas, though it's officially named after the ancient Transylvanian city of Alba Iulia. If you stroll along it, a bit quieter would be nice, but we have what we have. You'll eventually hit the Freedom Square. On the day I rolled into town, there was a festival going on. Stages in every nook and cranny. Quite delightful to the ears, if I may say so. When 
the festival isn't hogging the limelight, Square flaunts their baroque, remember I mentioned the city's makeover, Plague Pillar. A somewhat questionable name, but these monuments commemorate the end of epidemics in Central Europe. Mind you, back then, end often meant two-thirds of the city bit the dust and the rest had a stroke of luck. At the pinnacle is the Virgin Mary, and down below is Saint Rock, who treated the sea, caught the bug himself, but somehow survived, then made it back home and refused to spill his name, got mistaken for a spy, not too surprising really, and ended up kicking the bucket in prison stain incognito. Now let's shift gears to another city square, the Union Square. This one's got a green garden decked out with Christmas trees. A whiff of the new year for me. The square has been nicely doled up, reminding me a bit of Central European counterparts, Antwerp in particular. There are two cathedrals holding court of the square the Serbian and the Roman Catholic Cathedral of St. George. The Serbian one is a bit more straightforward, tucked away and facing the other way, but it's a breeze to stroll over to St. George Cathedral. Oddly modern looking for something erected in the first half of the 18th century, it's the second largest Catholic cathedral in southeastern Europe. The largest, surprisingly, also sits in Romania, just north of Timisoara. As I mentioned, there's a bit of festival vibe in the city. While other squares reverberate with good old rock, in front of the cathedral the kidders are belting out a different tune. And there are quite a few performances scattered about. Another bunch is crooning in front of the theater. Finally, with less crowds around, you can take in the sights. And let me tell you, Timisoara certainly has its own charm. Besides the usual cafes and classic attractions, Timisoara boasts an unexpected array of street monuments, each quirkier than the last. Reminded me a bit of Madrid. Oh, by the way, I meandered through non-touristy Timisoara too. Not overly thrilling, though there are some intriguing bits here and there. Near the Union Square, there's this rather nondescript building. Without the plaque, you'd never guess that it's a proper bishop's palace, constructed in 1743 and spruced up in 1889. Not overly awe-inspiring, I must say, except for that grand door, even if it does look a bit plasticky. Now, check out the building opposite. It's like a scene straight out of an old movie. Just look at this sign. Around the bend, you'll find one of the few remnants of Timisoara's Turkish history. This is St. George's Square. Is it a sport with a guy mocking the dragon? Although the horse of that chap seems a bit lackluster. Historically, there used to be a mosque here, and if you wander a bit farther, you'll see that the monument is standing on its ruins. And since we are on the subject of different faiths, a bit further is a synagogue. Actually, I was wandering around Timisoara in October, exactly during the attack on Israel, and I couldn't get through to anyone there by phone. And right at the moment, as I stood by this synagogue, the phone rings and everyone is fine. 
well, as fine as they could be in that terrible scenario. Talk about coincidences. So, after that little roller coaster, I trundle on to the next stop, Bucharest. Road still held up, luckily for me, but I can't say the same for everyone on that stretch. Now, let's have a natter about Romania's roads. A little bonus alongside Timisoara. You see, they've not quite managed to cobble together proper highways here. No, it's not like Mongolia, like the planes and directions only. In Romania, you can cruise on a splendid highway at 130 km per hour, but then it abruptly ends, channeling everyone onto regional roads and through villages. And when they say village, this is not an exaggeration. I was getting accustomed to a different scenery, so when I crossed path with a fella riding a horse-driven cart in the evening, I was a bit thrown off. I vaguely recall something about horse-drawn transport from my driving lessons many years ago, but I never thought I'd encounter it for real. Yet, here we are. And it's not just horses. I've also crossed paths with a cow on a stroll. Standard procedure, I guess. Rope tied to its horns, sauntering down the road with a twig. How the tracks maneuver around them is anyone's guess. No, seriously. The roads are not just narrow. They're also perpetually under renovation. And even when the sign says it's over, it's actually not. Oh, well it is. But here's the silver lining in this road predicament. There's not a single traffic camera in all of Romania. Clearly, if there's no way to put the pedal to the metal, why splurge on cameras? Sure, the police are stationed in sports, but folks give each other a heads up. And there's usually a mark on the map, so it's more of a gentleman's agreement. Yet the road is undeniably picturesque. A tad head-raising, but true. I'm cruising at 75 km per hour, the limit is 90, but those twists and turns are making me a bit queasy. Romanians will probably get around to building proper roads soon, especially since they joined the Schengen gang recently. But for now, it's a bit of a free-for-all on these roads. To wrap it all up, let's circle back to Timisoara. It's worth a visit if you are in the vicinity. I wouldn't hop in a plane from halfway across the globe just for this city. But Romania, without a hint of sarcasm, is splendid, especially when you venture beyond the cities. The Carpathians, endless fields and pristine nature are a sight to behold. And that is it for now. My next stop and a story for you will spill the beans on Bucharest. Until then, take care! Thank you.